You don't need insidious spirits, axe-wielding psychos, or even vampires to make a movie scary. For some films, it's the wild imagery and emotional and psychological impacts of the pics that have made audiences shudder for generations, despite never being labeled as horror flicks. Here are some movies that have managed to strike fear into viewers, no matter the genre label. Return to Oz While The Wizard of Oz boasted some slightly creepy moments, it was nothing compared to what craziness Return to Oz had to offer a half-century later. Whoever decided a horrific depiction of electroshock therapy, a talking disembodied moosehead, and sending a young Dorothy to an actual asylum was totally a solid idea must have been friends with the Scarecrow, because on paper it sounds pretty brainless. <laughs> What the film tries to pass off as whimsy is utterly upsetting, with the creatures of Oz 2.0 arriving as much more horrifying than cute. The creatures of Oz in this pick range from an unintentionally scary pumpkin-headed sidekick to the very intentionally scary villain, the Gnome King. And that's not even getting into the segment in which we discover that the fun, light-hearted sidekicks from the original film have been turned to stone. Return to Oz isn't a bad movie, though. The creatures are still excellently designed and puppeteered, and while the story is twisted, it does have a lot of heart and a few dozen decapitated heads. I believe I'll lock you in the tower for a few years till your head is ready, and then I'll take it. Not terrifying at all. The Brave Little Toaster before Toy Story launched a multi-million dollar franchise and the concept of inanimate objects coming to life when humans weren't looking, there was the brave little toaster. And if you find yourself wondering why the former took off while the latter has drifted into the distant plains of nostalgia, you should re-watch the movie to remind yourself that it's a technicolor nightmare of a film that no child has nor ever had any business watching. The themes ultimately boil down to a generational shift in household appliances, one that is, in retrospect, totally valid. Technology grows and gets updated, and it's strange and unsettling that the filmmakers insisted that a kid going off to college should feel a sentimental attachment to his toaster. We all know where that leads, right? Love you. And then when you do get into the nightmarish imagery, it's a whole new level of inappropriately scary. Evil firefighter clowns, panic-induced hallucinations, anatomically correct computer towers, and a crushing sequence in which the appliance gang finds themselves trapped in a junkyard make for an experience that even adults may not escape mentally unscathed. Did you hear that, boys? They want to know how to escape! <laughs> Requiem for a Dream Addiction is a very real horror millions of people grapple with daily, and perhaps no film has captured it as poignantly as Darren Aronofsky's bone-chilling Requiem for a Dream. Centering on a group of four people, it depicts the various stages of addiction to drugs, including amphetamines and heroin. The film is unflinching in its portrayal of the beginning stages of addiction, the side effects that come with it, and the withdrawal symptoms and fallout from trying and failing to get clean. From self-debasement in search of one more hit to a full-on arm amputation, there's a lot to unpack from the results of this disease and all its iterations. Aronofsky doesn't sugarcoat a single frame. Everything feels real. Everything hurts. Every moment of the film is an agony-ridden reminder of the anguish of addiction. It might not be a conventional horror film, but it's scarier than almost any movie about ghosts or werewolves. The Never-Ending Story Fear the nothing, kids. The never-ending story has some frightening imagery, but it stands out as particularly eerie thanks to the fact that its villain is a bone-chilling avatar of nihilism. Young heroes Bastion and Atreyu are trying to save the land of Fantasia from the nothing, a spreading of literal non-existence. It's not a monster. It doesn't have fangs or claws or horrible powers. It's just a void spreading across the land. Everything it touches exists until it suddenly doesn't. Then, there's the horrors of depression and grief, which is rammed into our brains with one devastating scene involving a horse. We don't even care whether or not we care. These are big concepts for kids to comprehend, but by sweeping away all of our new fantasy pals and threatening to destroy the childlike empress, it's shockingly scary all the same. Cropsy where do urban legends come from? To find answers, the filmmakers behind the documentary Cropsy look into the origins of the titular New York City boogeyman, a sort of amalgam of archetypes, like the escaped inmate and the scary man living in the woods. What they find is not a concrete answer as to whether Cropsy was ever real, but rather a sprawling investigation into a series of child kidnappings in the 70s and 80s, with more questions springing up every time they find an answer. The truth, as they find, is not only stranger than fiction, but infinitely more gut-wrenching. Here's this guy going around picking off these kids. The kidnapper, Andre Rand, was found guilty of kidnapping two of five missing people attributed to him, mostly children. He's currently in prison, but was never convicted of anything more serious, as four of the bodies were never found. Cropsey is a tragically poignant look at the relationship between truth and fiction, and while he may still be locked up, the phantom of these horrific crimes still lives on to this day. 
Akira Katsuhiro Otomo's legendary magnum opus is lauded for its groundbreaking animation, design, and depth. What occasionally gets overlooked is the fact that it's a very frightening film. Exploring the fallout of nuclear war and the aftermath of Tokyo being raised in an atomic blast, Akira tells the story of bike gangs, psychic children, and the evils of the military-industrial complex. The subject matter is scary enough, but what really comes down to making it grotesquely terrifying is the visuals. From a giant oozing teddy bear to a psychic prodigy's body growing and mutating like microwave Play-Doh, Akira is riddled with visual horrors. The film is a spectacular achievement in animation and science fiction. But don't sleep on how scary it is. Pairing a grim look at humanity's future with graphic imagery, this movie will shake you to your core. Matilda Why is Matilda a low-key terrifying movie? Three words. Principal Agatha Trunchbull Your mommy is a twit! When removed from its villain, it's a fun little film about a brilliant young girl with psychic powers navigating a world that doesn't understand her. But throw in Principal Trunchbull and you've got something much darker. Trunchbull is sadistic, clever, and almost animalistic in her aggression towards her students. She also implicitly murdered the father of Miss Honey, Matilda's teacher and the one person who seems to understand her. Anytime a child protagonist is put up against an adult villain, there's a certain power dynamic that makes the relationship inherently disturbing. But when viewers are presented with a character as fundamentally good and pure as Matilda, and a villain as monstrous and borderline inhuman as Trunchbull, it becomes genuinely ghastly. For evidence, look no further than the scene which Matilda and Miss Honey sneak into Trunchbull's house and almost get caught. Matilda's a great movie as it is, but the addition of Agatha Trunchbull not only makes it better, it makes it scary. No Country for Old Men at the pitch-black heart of the Coen brothers' adaptation of Cormac McCarthy's No Country for Old Men is Javier Bardem as Anton Chigurh, a restrained, lurking hulk of a man on a mission of anarchy and evil. His performance earned him an Oscar and gave life to one of the definitive villains of a generation. Physically unremarkable, save for a truly horrible haircut, Chigurh trudges unrelentingly through the streets, a hitman assigned to take the life of Josh Brolin's Llewellyn Moss. Despite his uncannily quiet demeanor, Chigurh is a human wrecking ball, slaughtering and maiming indiscriminately as he makes his way to Moss. He resembles less a human and more a force of nature. Bardem's performance is restrained when necessary, but brutal and thunderous when the right moment comes. He's the linchpin of an already stellar film, a masterpiece of tension and inevitability. Moss is doomed as soon as Chigur has his name. The horror comes in watching him try to avoid a fate the audience immediately recognizes as inevitable. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory Although it's widely regarded as a children's film, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is a movie that cranks the scare factor up to 10 with astoundingly little warning. At first, it's a fun, inspirational movie about a boy named Charlie getting the opportunity to tour a magnificent magical candy factory. Sounds fun, right? Then Charlie goes to the actual factory and things get weird. This is going to be such an exciting day. I hope you enjoy it. I think you will. The next thing you know, candy maker Willy Wonka is revealing his factory is run by an army of tiny green-haired men that are weirdly inhuman. One minute the kids are all learning about candy, and the next, one of them is being turned into a blueberry. Another is left to nearly drown in a river of chocolate, and then he takes everyone else through a tunnel of outright terror before punishing some more of the kids. Like showing them a chicken snuff film wasn't bad enough. This is kind of strange. Yes, yeah, strange, Charlie, but it's fun. <laughs> Pee-wee's Big Adventure the original Pee-wee's Playhouse wasn't exactly devoid of bizarre imagery to begin with. But under the guiding hand of the master of strange, Tim Burton, Pee-wee's Big Adventure became something deeply unsettling. The film is chock full of mastermind Paul Rubin's signature weirdness, and Burton's direction cranks it up to the highest possible level. It's perhaps no more evident anywhere in the film than in the appearance of Large Marge, a terrifying ghost trucker who gives Pee-wee a ride. Yes. <laughs> the appeal of Pee Wee Herman as a character has always sort of been caught between adults and children, sometimes skewing heavily in one direction and then suddenly leaning into the opposite. Milk! Milk! Lemonade! From the corner, fudge is made! The movie makes that switch frequently, which just makes the more surreal Burton bits all the scarier. One never quite knows what to expect. Going clear. Scientology and the Prison of Belief. It's easy to joke about the Church of Scientology, thanks to a few pretty choice moments from famous member Tom Cruise. So, like, have you met an SP? <laughs> Going Clear serves as a tremendously important reminder that the organization is far more than a punchline, and that it's alleged to inflict a very real horror on its members and their loved ones daily. 
The filmmakers interview multiple former members about their time in the organization and what they saw. And their stories will horrify you. From cult-like group thing to demeaning manual labor, the stories get worse as the film progresses, with a couple of men who held high positions in Scientology openly talking about using physical intimidation on detractors of the church as well as its members. But no segment of the film is as chilling as the one in which a woman recounts the story of the church effectively kidnapping her newborn daughter, forcing her to do hard labor, and what she subsequently went through to break out of a church facility with her child in escape. Going Clear takes an organization many people are loosely familiar with as a pop culture reference and recontextualizes it as the masterpiece of a career con man, its founder, sci-fi author L. Ron Hubbard. That his group has proven so successful even decades after his passing, and that nobody seems to be capable of stopping them, may be as frightening as any sci-fi novel. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.